Shabbat Shalom Hebrews. This is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. Message from the Israelite Brotherhood. All right, Hebrews. I've been wanting to uh, point some things out in the Tanakh that, you know, cause us to lose our heritage and us being stupid and not smart. And we know that we haven't been smart as a people consequently to our enslavement i'm talking about you know we been enslaved a long time and the people's minds are messed up and you know we can attribute this to our ancestors breaking the covenant long time ago being ignorant and not understanding our purpose and you know how we are they descendants and we are just like them you know, and I want to point out in the Tanakh what some of this stupid stuff that we do today as a people that's been embedded in us for a long time, where it come from and its origin. You know, it's like I was reading the Tanakh the other day and I was reading about Prophet Isaac, man, and it prompted me to make that video how the Creator, you know, blessed him because he stayed fast to what his father Abraham stood for and he didn't go left or right and then how he was blessed with the most essential thing that mattered during them time they kind of like matter now you know did you see how we buying water and so forth well our father Isaac man he you know the creator blessed him with wells wherever he dug it's gonna be some water there and it was during famine time and so forth you know but man I want to show how us Israelites, uh, man, we ain't been no smart people, and we done did a lot of stupid things, you know. So I'm going to point the finger at the uh, Israelites that did stupid things to cause our captivity and loss of heritage. I'm talking about the whole Tanakh is full of the history. The whole Tanakh is full of the history, and, and you know, there's no getting away from that we have not been a smart people as Israelites and how we done just man and did just the opposite of what our forefathers stood for especially the prophet Abraham you know it's like a lot of us and a lot of our ancestors haven't let go of the religion that our slave owners gave us you know i'm talking about we got an abundance of information available now and there's no reason why a israelite should be still worshiping the slave owner's religion you know our slave owner was real crafty you know when he gave us the religion and that's why i want to point the finger you know <laughs> point the finger man there's some of this stuff man it's like you know uh, uh, our slave owners gave us a repackaged religion, a repackaged religion that, that they got from conquest and they repackaged it and, and they gave it to us in the slavery days and it's the same religion that we broke the covenant for being stupid that caused our enslavement. You know, our slave owners and their descendants and our enemies are real slick and their whole purpose is to keep us from coming into our heritage as Israelites because you know that's the end of you know their uh, lies and deceit you know with the control that they have on this earth you know I want to show how you know Israelites are worshiping a religion that was given to us during the, our oppression and how the religion that was given to us is repackaged and it's the same as the queen well it's the same as christianity but 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 repackage is christianity's foundation and root you know that i is horse you know the, the i is Horus, the, the mother and child, and how the Catholic Church is a is 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 the continuation of the mother 
in child worship and then how you know it freed men and now they just worship the sun and so forth you know the more ignorant they became but how did that religion was in Egypt where we broke covenant and didn't do right and how the people that conquered Egypt you know the Greeks man took and repackaged that religion you know and and, and then it was around during Roman times, the Greeks and the Romans are kindred, and then and, and then they repackaged that religion, and, and then uh, uh, sent it, you know, to uh, Europe, and, and then when our ancestors got enslaved, those folks was here, and then they gave us the repackaged religion that we broke the covenant for. Man, I had this, I got this book. I just don't know where it's at. All of a sudden, called Stolen Legacy, and Stolen Legacy, Stolen Legacy show that the uh, Greeks and the Romans and so forth come in and, and uh, got the Greeks, uh, uh, got the Egyptians' uh, uh, heritage and so forth, and, and, and dissected it and, and, and everything, and then how did you know they took that back to? Uh, Europe and repackaged and, and then they put it on the conquered folks, especially us Israelites who had broke the covenant for the Egyptian religion. They they put the repackaged religion on us and so forth that we had originally broke the covenant for. I and mean, I got that book, Stolen Legacy. I don't know where it's at by George James and he did a good job documenting how the Greeks got in and got everything and took it to Greek uh, to uh Greece and then you know we know that the Romans came and then how they dissected and I already well how they inherited a dissected culture, you know, in Egypt and so forth and then, you know, that Queen of Heaven religion that we originally broke covenant for is nothing but the Catholic Church and then how it was put on us after they captured us in Africa later on, you know, for breaking covenant. You know, we went into Africa during the Babylonian Wars to do that Egyptian religion that they repackaged to uh, put on us. And look, this is where the original Catholic Church worship come from. You know, that's where it come from. And, and, and us Israelites broke the covenant for that uh, evil stuff. And, and it caused our captivity. You know, I want to show in the Tanakh, you know, where the Torah too. But the Tanakh, how, you know, the little different times that we did stupid things that made a, 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 a tremendous difference. You know, that's like now. We are suffering right now today from allowing the Amorites to get into our heritage during, uh, uh, after Exodus, after we Exodus Egypt. You know, we encountered a situation and we still suffering right now today because people don't understand and it's a good thing that I'm pointing this out. This, this stupidity and, and, and this crazy stuff that happened to us as a people that we are still suffering from as Israelites. Because if you don't know, then, you know, you suffering from this problem. You know what I'm saying? If you got some knowledge of the problem, then you can kind of rearrange it in your mind and then your actions. You know what I'm saying? To be the proof, you know, man, of your understanding it so forth and I'm quite sure that you will reject the peoples as Israelites that are falsely claiming our heritage well during the uh, exodus under Joshua watch the Amorites the Amorites got into our heritage quickly real quickly real quickly you know they knew it was coming in to destroy them and they culture and it was a decree to do that you know they was very wise about that as stated in their actions when they knew that we was coming to destroy the tribes that was before us after we had destroyed some 
previously and the Amorites understood our purpose and so forth and then how that uh, uh you know they would trick us under Joshua watch and I'm gonna go into that and, and uh you know we basically didn't get tricked under our Hebrew forefathers like Abraham Isaac and Jacob we didn't get tricked up under them you know and that mostly we got tricked after they uh, uh, passed away and then our culture was in our father's Jacob's uh, uh, hand and then his sons under his sons we are their descendants and then how that we mostly got tricked men you know it's like you know we didn't follow the course of our forefathers with very simple things very simple things and that's the uh, worship uh, uh, part is that how did we would worship false gods after we would successfully defeat the folks that worship the false gods and that how we'll turn around and worship they false gods and so forth but I think that a very crucial thing happened to us before all this to kind of like uh, uh, open the door for it, like a wound man that wouldn't heal and so forth and, and then that would be when our forefather uh, uh, Joseph was in Egypt and, and then old slick Pharaoh old slick Pharaoh know that we was in the promised land and that we was Israel, uh, Israelites and Hebrews and that we didn't worship our, their gods as experienced with our forefather Abraham being in Egypt you see what I'm saying and then when our father Jacob when our father Jacob get to Egypt and, and that his son Joseph went and picked up because it was a grievous famine in the land and that is the thing I just made a video showing that our father Jacob uh, father Isaac you know he was told not to go to uh, Egypt and it was a grievous a grievous uh, uh, famine in the land and it how did he didn't go man to Egypt but that how our father Jacob went to Egypt during the famine and Pharaoh would know that Israelites were in Canaan way back from our father Abraham times and, and, and they know the contact that they had with our father Abraham is that they couldn't uh, uh, steal our mama. They couldn't steal our mama Sarah and and that the Canaanite tribes couldn't get our mama Rebecca. So they know that we're going to be a thorn in their side. So I think that Pharaoh was real crafty, real crafty when he seen that Joseph didn't worship the Egyptian gods, which didn't answer, uh, 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 which Pharaoh couldn't get to answer him and his problems that he was having, because he was having problems from Almighty Yah, that that Joseph answered the uh, the the Pharaoh dreams. All right, and I think that when Pharaoh seen that, that Pharaoh was so slick, Pharaoh was so slick that he knew that his people had to do business on the other side of the inheritance that we got because the Babylonians and Egyptians were like the same system and they was the same kindred and so forth and worship the same gods and so forth just different names so you know if we right there doing the covenant doing the covenant and, 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 and there's no trespassing with idol worshipers and so forth and demigod worshipers that Pharaoh and them whole system was finna be cut off and we was finna cut Egypt off and then I think Pharaoh super slick being the head of his people that he gonna have to be real smarter than the average person and that Pharaoh gave Joseph Asenath knowing that if they produce any children that their children gonna be connected to the Egyptian system and, and this would be a problem with us Israelites trying to get established with a no demigod worshiping system, no God sons and sons of God worshiping system, and how do we was gonna stand for that, and then how Pharaoh did kind of like hinder that or, and cause trouble to that. Well, I say that Pharaoh playing work because 
Pharaoh uh, uh, put his religion on us, and, and, and I say that it caused us problems later on through the tribe of Ephraim, and that we lost our heritage, as stated in the Tanakh, that Ephraim was the problem of a tribe the problem tribe and it goes from their Egyptian connection and I say that Pharaoh was super super slick super slick when he gave Joseph Asenet and then if you go to uh, Genesis I mean that'd be Genesis 40 41 Genesis 41 41, 45, I'm going to pull it up in the Tanakh and see what it read. Because if you read in the, uh, read the New Testament, I just showed, you know, how they changed the word fair, which could, you know, have a, 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 a not so good meaning and how that they can, uh, use that meaning uh, for bad uh, purposes, the word fair, when actually in the Tanakh it says beautiful and so forth. You know, dealing with our mother Rebecca, how that she was beautiful to the other folks, but in a Christian translation, which, you know, the Christian translation is the King James Version, and it leads you to uh, demigod worship if you follow it through the translations, how they try to say, you know, that the prophet Isaiah, you know, was speaking. Uh, in, in terms of demigod worship with some of his history and if you make that comparison to the Tanakh you're going to see that it's wrong too you know yeah, it's wrong too so you know we have to be careful with you know you know I read from the King James Version but because it's good history and I done documented all the history you know basically in it but when you go back and read certain verses in the Tanakh and, and certain words man you can draw a whole entire meaning you can see from the uh, King James Version and that how it's not solid and so forth and that how in the Tanakh the, the Hebrew translation is going to be more solid and make sense you know our mother was a beautiful woman you know and then when they try to use fair it, it, it can mean you know white clear and I mean a whole bunch of other different meanings and stuff but we know beautiful means birth all right man if you go to genesis 41 45 41 45 and you gonna see that that old slick pharaoh old slick pharaoh gave joseph look Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, yet without you no one shall lift up hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh then gave Joseph the name Zephanath Paniah, and he gave him for a wife, Asenath, daughter of Potipori, priest of On, the priest of On. And Joseph would have two, two sons by her. Before the years of famine came, Joseph became the father of two sons, whom Asenet, daughter of Potipari, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh, meaning Yah had made me forget completely my hardship and my parental home. In the second, he named Ephraim, meaning Yah had made me fruitful. Uh, uh, first in the land of my affliction. Now, did not say, did not say that Pharaoh. Gonna probably get Joseph Asenath. The priest's daughter is because of the religion system. Because of the religion system, meaning he planted his seed. He planted his seed, he planted his seed, and it blossomed and, and grew into us breaking the covenant. So Pharaoh defeated us kind of like from way, way back then, even though Almighty Yah got the last say. In, 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 in the last plan because he destroyed the ancient Egyptian system. You know, ain't no question about that. And, and I can show how the Edomites got control of Egypt and the Tanakh is going to be during Solomon time. You know, during Solomon time. You know, King David chased them and whooped them and they ran to Egypt and Pharaoh gave them some land, the Edomites some land. And then upon Solomon's 
death, you know, man, all the Edomites come up out of Egypt, but they still had land in Egypt, and those Edomites would get Egypt, you know, in six, 600 A.D., uh, 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 somewhere like that, and been there ever since. All right, so we, we know that Pharaoh going to give Joseph Asenet, the priest's daughter, being slick. Being slick because he know that, man, if we get entangled with the Egyptian religion, that we're not going to be able to do a perfect covenant that the Creator gave us. And I can show that how that that's true because you see that Pharaoh gave him the priest's daughter. Now, why would you give him the priest's daughter instead of somebody else's daughter? He gave him the priest's daughter knowing that the grandchildren will be taught the Egyptian religious system and, and then I can show that men did come to pass because when we left some Egyptians left with us and then when Prophet Moses would go away to get the contract agreement the covenant agreement for the uh, for the promised land that we start worshiping the Egyptian religion and then I want to read it in the Tanakh and show you a little difference that's in the uh, uh, King James Version, they try to blame it on Prophet Aaron. But but in the Tanakh, man, it kind of say that he was forced to, you know, to make the uh, golden calf and so forth. And then I say that that's Pharaoh plan, uh, uh, planting his seed. And then it was understood by our prophets later on that this is what happened, that we got ensnared with the Egyptian religion long time ago and that the Egyptians broke us in because remember, we didn't worship false gods up under uh, our father Abraham. We didn't worship false gods up under our father Isaac. And we definitely didn't worship no false gods up under our father Jacob. But after he passed away, and then the sons, see the sons always, we, we, we couldn't get it together and keep the same program going and so forth. And because we know how the brothers did Joseph, even though it was Yahweh and so forth. But... How did that the tribes would fight each other and, and bicker with each other and so forth. And that how we didn't have a unified plan and so forth. But I say that Pharaoh planted his seed and it come to pass. Because if you go to, uh, let's go to uh, Ezekiel. They're showing that we understood, we understood what had happened to us. Even though we couldn't stop it, we understood. And if you go to Ezekiel, man, that'll be Ezekiel 23, 23. And Ezekiel 23. The word of Elohim came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there are two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in each. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the tents of their virginity. In the name of them are Ahala, the elder, and Ahabala, her sister, and they were mine, and they bear sons and daughters. This were their names. Samaria is Ahala, and Jerusalem is Ahala. So we know that, that Pharaoh plan was working uh, uh, after we exodus Egypt, and, and we only stayed on the land about 800 some years so dealing with the book of Ezekiel man it'll be coming towards our end you know it because in, in 595 BCE is when he experienced the, you know when the Babylonians came after the Egyptians killed King Josiah and, and then how did the Babylonians come and then how we hadn't only been on the land the promised land from Exodus man for about 800 years and, and then how that, you know, what Pharaoh did to us by giving Joseph Asenet come, come to fruitation then because we went into Egypt to worship the Egyptian religion. Now, it just showed you how we was hooked on Egyptian religion, man, from our youth, you know, and, and that we know that, man, that we had to acquire that, man, that later on, you know, towards the, the uh, uh, after our father's, uh, uh, Jacob's children was born, and, and then our, our uh, uh, pillar of strength, Prophet Abraham and Isaac, and them men had passed away, 
and and our father Jacob was towards his end, and because he had passed away in Egypt, and we had to go bury him, so he didn't know that we was going to end up worshiping that Egyptian religion. He didn't know it, you know what I'm saying? And, and then after he passed away, and we buried our father Jacob, then, you know, we had that Egyptian religion stuff on us as showed by Tanakh. And then, if you go to, uh, go to, uh, I mean, let's go to Exodus, 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 man, that'll be about Exodus 12. Man, I'm gonna read this from the, from the Tanakh, Exodus 12, 38. Let's see what 1238 say. 1238. Let me see. 1238. All right. The Israelites journeyed from Remesis to Sukkot, about 600,000 men on foot, aside from children, moreover, a mixed multitude went up with them and very much livestock both flocks and herds and they baked unleavened cakes of of the dough that they had taken out of egypt for it was not living since they had been driven out of egypt and could not delay nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves so we had to leave in the haste man before it was time for you know they probably rationed out the flour and then we had to uh get it ready by dough but it was so time to leave so fast that it didn't get a chance to uh uh set in and, 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 and you know get right and so forth all right but we see that 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 mix more of a mixed mouth to went up with them so so pharaoh and them gonna send some of their folks with us they gonna send some of their folks with us and and, and, and and then you can see this you can see this that when you go to uh Exodus Exodus 32. Man, it'll be Exodus 32. Let's see. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Show enough. When you go to Exodus 32, and I'm gonna read it in the Tanakh, because it reads better, and I'm gonna show y'all this differences is how the Christian translation try to make our father Aaron responsible for what happened after prophet Moses left to go get the contract from the creator of how we should govern the promised land. All right? And then look here. This is the Christian version right here. King James. All right? And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, up, make us gods which shall go before us. You see, but they gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. All right, but, but if you read the Tanakh, man, it says, When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mount, mountain, the people gathered against Aaron. So see, they gathered against Aaron and said to him, Come, make us God, make us a God who shall go before us. For that man Moses who brought us from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold earrings that are on the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people took off the gold rings that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. This he took from them and cast it and made it into a molding calf and, and and they claim, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Look, look, look here. Awful, 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 awful. There, there, there it is. There it is. And that leads to the highest horse. You know, that, that leads to highest horse. The golden calf is the, the symbol and the representation of I.S. Horus. And, and, and that's what we broke covenant for. Well, we had Egyptians with us when we left. And that was a, a plot by Pharaoh. That was a plot by Pharaoh. And we see how that come to pass. And, and how what happened to us in our end is that we broke the covenant for the Egyptian religion 
in the book of Jeremiah for Egyptian religion. We broke the covenant for Egyptian religion, but we see how Pharaoh planted the seed. See, got to point the finger at all this. Man, we got to point this out. So Israelites will know we can't be in the blind with none of this. You know, I might not even went over this before, but we got to keep going over it to us a understanding in the Israelite community. But you see how them Egyptians left with us. So we're going to say that Pharaoh was being slick. So, you know, man, it was stupid on our part to uh, uh, put the uh, e e Egyptian stuff up, even though we, you know, wasn't supposed to do that. You know, we wasn't supposed to do that. And, and we did that after Moses left and we hadn't got the covenant contract. But them Egyptians was with us. And I say that that was a strategic move by Pharaoh. You see, everybody uh, tried to get us on false gods, you know, and, and false god worship. It's important that they do that because the Israelites were supposed to be a priestly nation for the uh, uh, for the Creator. You know, the, the only nation that, that he going to recognize a, 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 a worshipful religion should come from, and, and that's because how our forefather Abraham them stood up. Look, this is Exodus 9, uh, uh, 19, 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You know, a, a, a holy nation. And then let me see what what the uh, Psalms 40, Psalms 40, uh, let's see what I got there. Psalms and I got Psalms 40, 147. Let's see what it says. I may not turn right to it. He showed his look. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Elohim. See, that's because everybody was on demigod worship. Man, if you wasn't a descendant, a, a prophet, no, nine out of ten, you're going to be worshiping the God. And the gods, the serpents, and them worship. The, the fallen angelic beings, they kindreds, you know. And then we can see the, the, the uh, they byproduct, man, it's the Nephilims. And we know the Nephilims and the Amorites and the Canaanite tribes of all was all mixed up, and then that's where all the wickedness come from. Because if you worship false gods and, and demigods, then it's easier for you to be wicked. That's like now, it's easier for the Israelites to be wicked under the religious system that our slave owners got us up under. Because you know they got it where you can be wicked and it's all forgiven and don't even have no conscience about nothing that you did wrong because their false god forgives you and, and and so the wickedness can just continue and so forth and 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 and, and that type of belief go all the way back to egypt but like to not say that almighty y'all ain't get him his laws because he gave it to somebody special abraham and and, and then from abraham his descendants they got the covenant for the land because the people that was in the land wasn't you know doing right they was wicked and evil and so forth all right so you know we were stupid for uh allowing them egyptians to leave with us and we were stupid men for worshiping their god when prophet moses left being that our father abraham uh, uh uh, Abraham, Isaac, and especially Jacob didn't worship the Egyptian religion. Abraham was in Egypt. He didn't worship it. Uh, uh, our father Jacob was in Egypt, and he didn't worship the Egyptian religion. And that should have been good enough for us. But it wasn't. And that Egyptian religious system got us kicked out the land. All right, so then we were Exodus. All right, we, we were Exodus. And then I want to show how we constantly... Constantly, constantly, constantly did stupid things. Constantly did stupid things with concerning Prophet Moses. You know, we didn't already done come out of Egypt uh, 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 and then end up worshiping their religion, you know, uh, uh, with false God worship through the uh, golden calf worship 
and, and then we still wasn't satisfied, you know, when Moses got that straight and did how we complain, men the whole time, man, man, if you go to, uh, man, if you go to, uh, Numbers, no, man, let me do Exodus, Exodus 16, 3 first and see what it, no, man, man, I'm going to do this Exodus 14, Exodus 14, uh, uh, 3, look, and all the congregation lift, lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and against the whole congregation, and said unto them, Would y'all that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would y'all we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore had the Elohim brought us out of this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to sojourn, uh, to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Now, now that's off. Man, don't forget now, Pharaoh done planted, Pharaoh done planted them Egyptians with us. Some of them left with us to mix mouth too. So it, you know, mean that the day in the back cutting up on us. They in the back cutting up on us. That's why come when we get in the promised land, we ain't finna have nothing but y'all worshipers. We ain't finna have all these subgroups. Uh uh. Well, we, we y'all sun worshipers and not and there won't be none of that. It's just going to be y'all worship only. Y'all worship only. All right? Man, if you go to Exodus, Exodus 16, 3. Exodus 16, 3. And, and, and it says, Ye shall have one lot. Let me see. Exodus 16, 3. All right, that's 15. Exodus 16, 3. And. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye make too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, holy, uh, uh, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Elohim is among them. Wherefore then lift up ye yourselves above the congregation of the Elohim. You know, man, we was challenging Moses every time he turned around. Every time he turned around, we was challenging him. And, and seeing that the Creator was with him at, at every turnaround. And, and we still was challenging Prophet Moses and so forth. And, and throughout the uh, uh, throughout the uh, tour, you get the history of, of how we, you know, did Prophet Moses. Man, I'm going to read this other one in the, in the Tanakh. Man, it will be... Numbers, numbers 20. So, man, we wasn't too bright, man. I'm pointing all this out. All right, go to 20 verse 5. And it says, The people quarreled with Moses, saying, All right. All right, the Israelites arrived in their body at the wilderness of Zen. On the first new moon, and the people stayed in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. The community was out was without water, and they joined against Moses and Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses, saying, "If only we had perished when our brothers perished at the instance of the Elohim. Why have you brought up the Elohim con congregation into this wilderness for us?" For us and our beasts to die here. Why did you make us leave Egypt? Look. Why did you make us leave Egypt? To bring us into this wretched place. A place with no grain or fig or vine. Or plumber grain. There is not even water to drink. See man we. We, we wasn't a small people. Amorite. We was a stiff necked Rebellious people. Coming men into our heritage. Well, you know what I'm saying? And, and, man, let me see what the 16, 16, 13. I don't know how I missed that. I should have read that one first. But, but let's see what it says. All right. It, 
Moses sent for Dotham and Abram, sons of Eli, but they said, but they said, we will not come. Is it not enough that you brought us from a land flowing with milk and honey to have us die in the wilderness that you would also lower it over us even if you had brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey and given us passion of fields and vineyards should you guard out the men's eyes we will not come you know what I'm saying so man we did all kind of stuff to prophet Moses so we wasn't smart doing exodus and we was real stupid and our stupidity would stay with us all the way till we would break covenant now now I'm gonna tell you a time that, that we didn't play no games under King David. King David would have put your lights out. You know, he would have unalived you. He would have put your lights out. And then that's why the creator loved him so much. But after King David, man, it's basically downhill uh, uh, until we was kicked out the land in, in the uh, book of Jeremiah and, and, and driven out the land into the captivity that we in now. But but I want to show something else real real stupid we did that got us caught up it is if you go to uh Joshua man that'd be Joshua uh uh Joshua man and, and then like I said about the Amorites how these Amorites got in our heritage got in our heritage and, and in the tour got in our heritage in the tour and, and, and was lodged was lodged in our heritage and after we were defeated conquered and driven out that they start claiming our heritage now this is something that need to be pointed out to to the Israelites is that they don't have no understanding is that the Amorites got our heritage long time ago and, and, and those of these folks right here and, and, and it don't matter because if they are Amorite, I mean, if they are Amorite in, in Babylon, and, and, and if they was an Amorite in the promised land, they're going to be the same people. And then that's going to be the uh, the, the, the Seb Hardys, who real name is Seb Harvey, and did how that they was placed in Samaria describes. But before then, we had let they people into our heritage after we were tricked by them. See, we was tricked by them under Prophet Joshua is that when we destroyed some of they people, the, the, the Amorite tribe, some of them put on some dirty clothes and some old, uh, uh, and had some old food and then come to us saying that, hey, y'all, we come from a long way. And, and, and that can we be service to y'all and, 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 and that we made a promise with almighty y'all named that we wouldn't destroy them and then we find out about them that, that, that they was close and that they deceived us and we did something real stupid so I'm going to point this out you know what I'm saying we did something real stupid it, it, it is that we made them hang around whatever temple a congregation that we will have to worship Almighty Yah that will make them servants in it. Now that's a bad thing and that was real stupid because if they around the temple and around our most sensitive uh, uh, heritage, our core heritage in, in, in that when we get chased off uh, uh, for, man, for breaking covenant because remember the Creator said we'll break covenant that they would have our heritage and be claiming our heritage you know because I made a video showing that the strangers had to do what we did so if they doing what we did and, and, and they hanging around us and when we get chased off the land then they get you know our heritage and that's these people right now today and, and they most sensitive ones came uh, uh, during the Assyrian times is when they was placed in Samaria in 722 BC, the ones that's responsible for Babylon's God's history from Sipper, you know, uh, the Sipharavims, they was Amorites, and we were supposed to destroy all the Amorites, as stated in the uh, uh, book of Joshua. You know what I'm saying? If you go to, uh, let's turn to 1st Joshua. 1st Joshua, all right? 
every place that the sole of your feet shall tread. Tread upon that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites, and, and, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. So, you know, they own the Euphrates. They own the Euphrates. And we're supposed to conquer all the land from from the Nile to the Euphrates. And, 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 and if you look at Sippa, that's the short word for Sepharvim. And they was placed in Samaria. They Amorites. They the scribes. They, they the most important ones. And they in control of our heritage right now and today. You know, that's why come our heritage got a Babylonian spin to it. Is because those scribes got lost in our heritage and they was even had a religion in Samaria. Their religion in Samaria that they mix with our heritage and so forth. And uh, uh but 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 they started off as they were Amorites. Those are Amorites in, in uh, uh Babylon right there that I'm showing you. Those are Amorites from Sipper and in, 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 in Babylon. All right, now when you go to this right here and, and then you read this, you'll see that the Gabonites, look, look the Gabonites, you know, all the Canaanite tribes got together and the Hittites and all the ones we was to destroy, the Jebusites, all them got together meant to fight against us under Joshua watch. But the Gabonites tricked us, you see, you get on, all right, now, let's show that they was Amorites. Let's show that they was Amorites. See, we blessed now. We can see this now. We can point this out. We can point this type of information out. All right. You go to a second Samuel. I mean, a second Samuel 21. And then when you get down to verse, verse 2. And the king called the Gabonites and said unto them. Now the Gabonites were not of the children of of Israel, but of the remain of the Amorites. Amorites, you see that? You see that Amorites right there? Well, that was some, there goes some more placed in our heritage uh, uh, in 722 BC, placed in our land. And then them ones from uh, 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 Joshua times got, uh, uh, got placed in our heritage, we made them the water, the wood cutters, the water gatherers, and so forth. Not knowing that there's gonna be consequences later on for that. All right, so you know, I didn't point that out. The Amorites got in our heritage. Look, man, if you go to uh, Second Kings, Second Kings, let's do this one in the Tanakh because it's so important. It's so important. It's so important. Second Kings, uh, uh. 17, 24, and let's see what that say. 2 Kings 17, verse 24. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, cut Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvim, and placed them in the cities in the towns of Samaria, they took possession of Samaria and dwelt in its towns. When they first settled there, they did not worship the Elohim. So the Elohim sent lions against them, which killed some of them. And they, you know, but, but they would mix our heritage with theirs. And, and now remember, some and our heritage since Exodus, since Exodus, now some old scribes come and they in Samaria. And they were the false worship was that Jeroboam uh, had set up. And that's another thing that I'm going to show is that when Jeroboam went to Egypt uh, uh, during Solomon's time, and that Jeroboam was from the tribe of Ephraim, and that Jeroboam brought the Egyptian religion out on us, the golden calves, the golden calves, yes, right there. And then he put that on us, and, and, and then that would stay on us all the way to we was driven out the land the northern kingdom uh, uh 
hierarchy was destroyed, man, because of the Egyptian religion. Look, all of them bad. All of them bad. All of them bad. Every last one of them couldn't get it right. Couldn't get it right. They'll believe in Almighty Yah, some of them, but then they'll just go back, man, to what their forefathers did all the way back to Jeroboam, who brought that Egyptian religion out on us. I say that that was Pharaoh's uh, 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 game being played out all the way back from uh, uh, when, and before we exodus, when when Pharaoh gave Joseph Aseneth daughter and so forth. All right, man, if you go to, uh, man, it, all right, all right, but, but before then, doing judges, doing judges after we done got some of the land, to get how we start fiddle-faddling with the enemy's religion. We start fiddle-faddling with the enemy's religion and wouldn't get them out the land and so forth and wouldn't destroy them. And we went into all kind of little bondages and stuff in the book of Judges and, and that how that we didn't start getting no uh, 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 freedom in until Saul come around and so forth and kind of like, you know, Led to uh paid the way for King David to get in there and do this thing to establish y'all y'all worship real strong, you know. But then after King David passed away, you know, after King David passed away, and that's another thing that that was bad during Judges' time is that the tribe of Benjamin, if you read uh uh nineteen uh Judges nineteen. Uh, uh, history uh, uh, many tell you how the tribe of Benjamin was hanging out with the Amorites in Jerusalem who practiced the Canite uh, uh, culture uh, uh, men on men uh, uh, sexual activities and so forth and how the tribe of Benjamin got caught up with that and how we almost destroyed them we almost destroyed them because that I got a video uh um, and explain it in detail what happened and so forth. So, you know, man, we got messed up real bad fooling with them Canite tribes. You know, we up under Canite, uh uh, Canite, Amorite, Babylonian administrative culture control by the United States government. I proved that the Amorites set it up also. All right, so, you know, let me go to, uh, all right, let's go to. First Kings, man, we know that Jeroboam brought that Egyptian religion out on us. You know, he brought that Egyptian religion out on us. And, and, and that would cause our doom, you know. Look, whereupon the king took counsel and made two cows of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And that's what Jeroboam did. You know what I'm saying? When uh, uh, Solomon uh, uh, passed away and, and then he come out of Egypt, you know, he only went to Egypt to his kin, you know, because the tribe of Ephraim are, are, are kindred to the Egyptians. From Joseph's marriage to Aseneth, having Manasseh and Ephraim. So he go Pharaoh's uh, uh, kun game coming coming in the works right here when Jeroboam put that Egyptian religion on us and then that Egyptian religion look look caused all these folks to fail all them folks to fail uh, under the royalty and, and the hierarchy and the soldiers in the army that protected the northern kingdom was wiped out wiped out because of the Egyptian religion man and so forth all right so you know We've been some messed up people doing some stupid stuff. Stupid stuff, all right? And, and, and then, man, each one of these kings got a history. Got a history. Each one of them got a history. And, and, and they history showed that they all failed. They all failed just like Judah kings got a history. You know, we separated, you know, doing after Solomon times, we separated and it was a northern kingdom governed by... Ten tribes in the southern kingdom governed by, you know, the two tribes. But we know that the tribes kind of like still intermingled. And then I proved that it never was any t 
ten lost tribes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we was all messed up on the Egyptian religion and creator broke up the northern kingdom's uh, uh, hierarchy and organizational structure and so forth. And after 722 B.C., you don't hear about them doing too much of anything no more, even though the tribes were still around in the northern kingdom after 722 BCE is that you go to King Hezekiah's history. King Hezekiah's history, and that'd be Second Chronicles. Man, I almost turned to it. Second Chronicles uh, uh, 30 deal with King Hezekiah's history, and this was in 715 BC when he uh, uh, had Passover dinner and asked the tribes to come, and this was after the so-called Ten lost tribes are uh, uh, supposed to have happened. That, that the Syrians took ten tribes, and I showed that all the tribes were still there. And, 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 and that how under King Hezekiah we tried to get it right. And then, you know, his son Manasseh uh, uh, didn't do right. And, and after he passed away, and then his son Amon didn't do right. But King, but but his son King Josiah did right, and, and gave us our last chance, men to stay on the promised land, and and then the Egyptians killed him, this Egyptian right here, and then consequently, that the uh, that the image the our enemy so cold is that. The obelisk that we was enslaved under that our forefathers would have seen in Egypt, we probably constructed it, is that it's in Central Park, and they call it the Cleopatra Needle, but it, it comes from the ancient, the, the Egyptian city of Halapolis, you know, around 14, 1450 BCE, and that's where this obelisk come from, from when we was enslaved in Egypt, just before we, uh, 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 got free and so forth and then this evil person right here his statue is a representation of him and that that's Nietzsche and he would kill King Josiah our last chance to get right before we went into Africa in the book of Jeremiah to do the Egyptian religion which caused our enslavement and we did some stupid stuff that I'm going to point out real quick you know I'm going to point it out real quick that, that if you go to Jeremiah, man, if you read the Tanakh, and, and you're just going to see stupid stuff left and right that we did, but these are the things that altered said, real change, drastic change. You know, we told Prophet Jeremiah after we was getting defeated by the... Uh, by the Scythians, Eskenazi, under the name Scythian, and, and that they was driving us out because we was doing that Egyptian religion, you know, in, in Judah, and that them folks right there started to drive us out. And is that, you know, we told Prophet Jeremiah to pray for us and, 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 and go to the Creator and see what he can do. And Prophet Jeremiah went and prayed for us, and then we was getting chased off the land, we was going into Egypt, and, and that Prophet Jeremiah told us, hey y'all, don't be, don't worry about them, you know, they some terrible people, but I'm going to make them have mercy on you and, and, and show you some kindness, stay in the land, don't go into Egypt and fool with their religion, now we know that the Egyptians been tricked us a long time ago, we've been having a problem with their worship throughout our whole time, from Exodus all the way to, you know, we broke covenant for their religion, well, the creator told us to stay and don't go into Egypt and then we didn't stay and we said that we ain't going to listen to the creator and now we going into Egypt meant to do their religion. You know, that's what we said and 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 then that caused our problems right there, you know, and I'm going to see if I can pull that up. All right, Jeremiah. That'll be Jeremiah. Jeremiah 42. I'm going to read it in the Tanakh, man. It's awful how we did the Creator. You know, we brought these problems up on ourselves, you know. That's why come we have to point out all the little stupid stuff that we did to, to make us stronger.
to when we get in the position to govern ourselves that we don't go back and do the same things that caused our destruction and so forth. But, but if you go to 42, look, then all the army which Johan, the son of Ker, Jenner, son of Hosea, and all the rest of the people, great and small, approached the prophet Jeremiah. See, this was after them folks and then chased us out. You know what I'm saying? They chased us out. They hot on us. They hot on us. F finna get us for worshiping that Egyptian religion. And that, you know, our army was transitioning over into Egypt. And, and, and this is what this is about right here. Then all the men, then all the army officers with Johan, son of Ker, Jasnai, son of Hoshea and all the rest of the people, great and small, approached the prophet Jeremiah and said, Grant our plea and pray for us to the Elohim, your Yah, for all this remain, for we are remain but a few of many, as you can see, that the Elohim, your Yah, tell us where we should go and what we should do. The prophet Jeremiah answered them, them agreed, I will pray to the Elohim, your Yah, as you request, and I will tell you, Wherever response the Elohim gives you for you, I will withhold nothing from you. Thereupon they said to Jeremiah, Let the Elohim be a true and faithful witness against us. We swear that we will do exactly as the Elohim your Yah instructs us through you. Whether it is pleasant or whether we will obey the let me see. We, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant, we will obey the Elohim our Yah. To whom we send you in order that it may go well with us. Then we will obey the Elohim our Yah. In ten days, after ten days, the word of the Elohim came to Jeremiah. And he answered Johan, the son of Ker, and all the army officers and the rest of the people. Many, many told us to stay. He told us to stay and not to go into Egypt. And we wouldn't listen. And then this is what we said. This is what we did. This is what we did. You know, but when, when, when you get to Jeremiah, uh, uh, forty-four, and then you get over to uh, to uh, fifteen. Man, you get over to fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. It was over with. We didn't did just the opposite of what we told him we was gonna do. And I'm going to read it. Alright. Alright. Thereupon they answered Jeremiah, All the men who knew that their wives made offerings to other gods, all the women present, a large gathering, and all the people who lived in Pathros in the land of Egypt, we will not listen to you in the matter about which you spoke to us in the name of the Elohim. On the contrary, we will do whatever thing we have vowed to make offerings to the Queen of Heaven. That's her right here, y'all. That that's her right there. That that's her right there. That's her right there in her representation. That that's the Egyptian religion that was on us since Exodus. Now we going into Africa to do it, which caused our enslavement that we are in today. Can you understand that? Can you understand that? Look, we will not listen to you in the matter about which you spoke to us in the name of the Elohim. On the contrary, we would do whatever thing we have vowed to make offerings to the Queen of Heaven to pour out libations to her as we used to do. We and our fathers, our kings, our officials in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty to eat. We were well off and suffered no misfortune. But ever since we stopped making offerings to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out libations to her, we have lacked everything and we have been consumed by the sword and by famine. Man, that's messed up. We, we see it since, since we wasn't worshiping this this thing right there you see me point it out you, you see we see it since we wasn't worshiping that since we wasn't worshiping that that we was doing bad and that was the reasons why we was having problems in the promised land 
So we went into Egypt, mean to do their stuff, and we never recovered. And we in bondage right now today because of that. And I just wanted to point some of this out. It's a lot of history to point out. It's a lot of history to point out. I ain't point out the history about King Josiah uh, uh, cleaning up the land, uh, cleaning up the land. All this after the so-called Assyrian captivity. All the tribes still at home from Hezekiah time all the way down to King Josiah time to the time we go into Africa. But how he cleaned the land up and we, and, and it was our last chance, man, to get right. And then we didn't get right. The Egyptians killed him. This this evil devil killed had King Josiah killed. And we would go in the book. We would go into Africa in the book of Jeremiah. And here we are right now today. Man, I just want to point some of these things out. You know, I know I spoke about some of it before, but uh, you know, we got to constantly point these issues out. Alright, Israelites, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood.